right, the next part of our lesson, we're going to be talking about step functions. So a step function is a graph that consists of just line segments. And in that step function family, we are specifically going to be talking about the greatest integer function. So this is a specific type of step function. So in our greatest integer function means that we want the greatest integer less than or equal to whatever we substitute in for x. And we know that we're going to be dealing with the greatest integer function by this symbol that we see right here. Okay. So let's just practice substituting in a number and then simplifying it. So if I substitute the 3.25 in for x and we want to get our y value, we always round down. And if we're thinking about a number line, we always round to the left, okay? So towards the smallest one. So if we're always going to round down, 3.25 would be simplified to 3. And then on the negative, so again, remember, we're rounding to the left. So this would simplify to be negative 5. And again, no matter what, we are always rounding down. So let's say I had the greatest integer of 3.9. We still want to round down to the next integer. And again, when I say integer, I'm talking about a whole number, either positive or negative. So even though it's 3.9, we still are going to round down to 3. Okay. Same thing, let's say that I had negative 4.1. We still round down, so again, to the left on a number line. So this is still going to be negative 5. Okay. All right, so now that we have, know how to substitute and simplify with our greatest integer, we're going to practice graphing. So the first one that we're going to graph is just the greatest integer of x. So the best thing to do, because we really have no idea what this graph is going to look like, is to start by making a t-chart. So to start with, just to get an idea of how to graph or what it's going to even look like, I'm just going to start picking numbers. So zero is usually a good place to start. So if I choose zero and I substitute it in and I round down to our next integer, well, we're just going to get zero. Um, let's say I choose one half, so 0.5 if we use decimals. So again, we're always going to round down, so that means that we would round back to zero. Same thing if I choose 0.75, that would still be 0. So it looks like my next change in y is going to be at 1 when I choose 1. Okay. And then again, as I'm picking, if I pick 1.5, that's still 1. So my next change isn't going to be until I choose my next integer, so 2. And then my y value would jump up. And that's going to be true on the negatives. So I'm going to extend my t-chart over here. So this is still the same t-chart. I just ran out of room down here, so I'm rewriting it over here. So if I choose a negative number, so again, let's start out with maybe negative 0.5. So again, we're rounding to the left, so that's going to give us negative 1. Same thing, uh, negative 0.75. That's still going to round to negative 1. So my next change, so let's see, even negative 1, that's going to give us negative 1. So if I choose negative 1.5, well, that's going to round to negative 2. So again, if I choose negative 2, that will also give me negative 2. So it looks like my changes are going to happen at the integers. Okay. So let's just start graphing some of these points to get an idea of what we're dealing with. So if we start here at 0, 0, here's my 0, 0 point. And then if I'm at 0 0.50, well, that's going to be really kind of in the middle here. And 0 0.750, so that's still going to be here. And it looks like when I graph 1, I'm going right 1, up 1, so here's my next point. So what's happening is that for my x values between 0 and 1, we have everything on this line up until 1, but we don't include 1 on the 0 line. So that really means that I'm going to have to draw an open circle right here, and then we have that segment connecting it. Okay. So same thing if I'm looking at this, well, when I get to 2, I'm going to go right to up to, here's my next solid dot, 
And no matter where I'm at, if I'm at one point something, I'm on one for my y value. So I'm gonna get another horizontal line until I get to two, and I'm gonna draw that open circle to show that I need everything up to two, but I can't include two. And then we're gonna connect them with that segment. And that same pattern is going to repeat forever. Okay, so I can keep going up like that. So my length of my segment is always gonna be one. That's true on this side. So if I'm at negative one, negative one, here's my solid dot, everything in between negative one and zero is gonna be on that one line for the y, and I'm gonna have an open circle here. And again, that same exact pattern is gonna continue forever in this direction. So it's starting to look like a staircase. So that means that every greatest integer function is gonna to have to look something like this. 